Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial. In this uh, tutorial, I will teach you how to create a fantastic and fascinating representation of LiDAR point clouds in Grasshopper. Um, so to do that, I will use a very interesting and unique um, set of components for Grasshopper. The name is Volvox. I was looking into different um, applications or plugins in Food for Rhino that are able to um, open, edit, and modify LiDAR point clouds, but it was difficult for me. I couldn't find many of them that are very straightforward or easy to use. Uh, when I put LiDAR, nothing pop up. Uh, when I put point cloud, there definitely there are many more. I tested several several of these ones, um, but I found a very good one um, uh, in in Food for Rhino, which name is Volvox, was developed by um, CETO or CETA, which is a I think is a research group in in Europe. Um, the bad news about it is this is uh, the last update is more than four years old, so it looks like no one is now. Um, somehow curating website or when I even click on the website couldn't find any information so I assume that this was a project and it's, it's end of the project and then no one else it's um, looking after the, 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 the plugin and also the the data so no one else is developing which is a pity um, it's a very good one um, there is a second release for point cloud editing, I highly recommend you to look at this. Um, it says here Grasshopper 4 and 5 for Windows. To be honest, I downloaded this Volvo 0.3.00 uh, dated 2016. I installed it in my computer and it worked perfectly. So when you download this, of course, you have to log in. What you get, you open the folder. It's basically, let's open it here, um, an ex executive file. Okay, so it's an application. I run the app, the, the installation normally. And once I was in, it's here, yeah, in, in Grasshopper, um, I was able to see a uh, ball box in my, in my, um, in my tools in my set of tools but this is rhino 6 so i assume it's working in rhino 6 now i know there is a rhino 7 i don't know how it good it works in rhino 7 but um as you can see the the volvo is working pretty well here Comparable architectural knowledge that's the name of the group who developed this uh, as part of a program of the european commission but look um it's working for me. I am 100% sure it may work in all the in all the computers and for all the different um, Rhino um, uh, licenses. So uh, I I would like you to install it and try to run it. Now something interesting that they mention in the website when you install it, you have to in Grasshopper choose the file, the special folders, components folders, and you have to save the volvox.gha, which is the common one. Decide that you have to include the Volvox inst instruction.dll and the Volvox clouds.dll as well as the Volvox, Volvox Python.py. And you have to copy everything there. So when you go, in fact, to the components folder, in my components folder, it shows um, all different libraries, and one of those is Volvox. But I would like to know if it's work for you. Otherwise, another possibility is I can zip this and make it then available for everyone in YouTube videos. So you just copy and zip and copy the whole uh, folder directly into the libraries of the Grasshopper. It's a potentially a way to, to sort it out the problem if you cannot install it. It's working in Rhino 6, which is surprisingly good. So so the logic of this uh, Volvox is like, and this is what I'm going to show, I'm going to make tutorial videos about this. So the first tutorial video that I want to explain is the number one, if I can draw here. So the first tutorial, the idea is like when you have a point cloud, you know, point cloud is a set of points 
collected by an active um, laser scanner, a sensor, an active sensor. So you have a collection of points in the space. Anyway, so um, once you have done this, um, the idea is um, usually we use Cloud Compare. Okay, I don't know if it's uh, appearing here. Let me see if my computer is allowing me to do this. So we use Cloud Compare, but sometimes we kind of use Cloud Compare all the times. We, we, we want to import the point clouds into Ras Grasshopper and Rhino and use it for different purposes, for modeling, for analysis. And if you can see, uh, I have plenty of um, resources and videos in my YouTube channel that talk about cloud comparing, how to manipulate point clouds, but also other other type of um, um, plugins that allows you to um, work with uh, products derived from LiDAR, like DMs, DTMs, DSMs, and so on. So the first tutorial will focus on how to import all of these uh, point clouds into Grasshopper, which is and manipulate them, edit them. And the second video will basically focus on um, second video will basically focus on the opposite. How we can modify or have a mesh or surface or or a volume or a building, whatever. So you can create your own model and how you can export your model as as um, an E57 uh, point cloud. So the logic here is how you can export this into the uh, 557, uh, sorry, 557, E557 file. So we're gonna do the opposite. So in the first, we're just bringing into whatever we have available. And in the second one will be even more interesting that we are going to manipulate different products or different volumes, can be V-reps, uh, buildings, surfaces, meshes, everything, and how we can export it as a point cloud. And then this is very useful because you can create your own 3D model. Once your 3D model has trees, vegetation, anything, even you can follow these ones, the one cloud has been imported into Grasshopper, then you can modify, this is the workflow, you can modify the Grasshopper, bring it into, um, add elements and features like buildings and trees and people, anything, and then export that as LiDAR point cloud. And then from the LiDAR, you can bring it into a other software, or I mean online webs, web um, storage systems like Sketchfab, for example. And then you can store your model, make it available for everyone. So it, this is going to be a set of two videos on Volvox that I, I promise will be very interesting for you. Okay. So once having said that, I will start just explaining how these um, Volvox work. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do, it's very simple, is um, I'm going to open a on cloud in cloud compare to explain you how to do the importation later in in in, in Rhino. Uh, Volvox uses or basically what what is the type of, of of file that is reading is is E57. So it's not working with LAS. It's not working with ASC as it grids. No, it's working with E57, which is a very particular uh, format for point clouds. Okay, so. The first thing we have to do to load um, E57 file is um, to load this 57 file. Oh, sorry, I think I made a mistake. It's here. Um, load E57 file. In order to, to do that, the first step we need to follow is okay. We need to save E57. So most of the co the most common lidar point cloud um, format is in LAS, LAS, also in a compressed version of LAS, which is LAZ. Um, so Cloud Compare helps you to open this. You can also do it with QGIS in LAS tools. You can also do it with RGs. You can also do it with LP360, LiDAR features, LiDAR analysts. There are plenty of softwares. You can also use a Revit, um, I think is this one, um, Recap. 
So you can collect the point clouds using a terrestrial laser scanner. You can also collect the point clouds using aerial laser scanner. You can use photogrammetry and derive the point clouds for, from photogrammetry. So this is another software in which you can you can save in E57. So, okay, now let me close this window. So what we're going to use is Cloud Compare is open source, it's free of charge, it's very straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to open the, I already have one point cloud, I did the classification, um, the segmentation. So this is important, is the coordinates are too big, so they are going to be translated into the Cloud Compare coordinates. So you just say yes to all. I have a lot of videos on Cloud Compare, so I recommend you to have a look at them if, if you don't understand what I'm talking about. So I have this, um, this set of point clouds. I already did the segmentation, so I already extracted only the ground okay, to make it simple and lighter. So you can use the EDL, which is the IDOM Lighting OpenGL shader here to shade your points. Okay, so these points have different color fields. As you can see, doesn't have, they don't have RGB. And I will explain you later why this is important. These color fields are information that I, I am, um, is added as, um, as um, um, important information for each point, like the point source, user data, scan angle, etc., and intensity, like this case. So you can see the intensity of the points, and you can, uh, you can classify the points based on intensity. So like, this is the intensity I will show you. It's showing a grayscale. It's fine. That's what may be imported or exported to uh, Rhino. So it doesn't have RGB. Let's keep it like this simple. Once it is there, you just click in Save. And then you choose the E57 Cloud, OK? I already have one here saved, which is the grid ground. So I know this, the 33 megabytes, it only contains 2 million of points of ground surfaces. Okay. So what we're going to do next is after saving in E50, E50, sorry, in E57, we go to Rhino. Okay. Once in Rhino, what we're going to do is we're going to load our 57 file. We need to add a file path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to display icons here so you can identify easily. We're going to add a file path. So this is the file path I connect, no problem. And then I will set one existing file. In this case, it's my cloud ground. The oh, this is less, I cannot use less, it's the grid ground, okay? E57, okay. So you can see it run properly, no problem. Now, what we're going to use this is a percent, is like a percent of points. So it's 100%. What you can do is here is, for example, put 0 0.3%. Let me, let me go to the points in perspective that I have not been loaded yet. I will explain you that soon. So it can be 0.3, so it's 30% of the points or 100% of the points. So when we come here, we can we have to run the, the, the cloud. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is simply add a Boolean toggle. It can be a Boolean button, but Boolean, a Boolean toggle, sorry. Boolean toggle. Okay. So we put run. Now nothing has been added, and now we put true and it's loading one point cloud it's showing the process it has been done and the point cloud is has been added here and you can see values of the color of in the representation are the intensity okay later we will give uh we will do some experiment with other colors to see how how it how it works so here we have one cloud uh if we want to represent it we can use also cloud which is in parameters cloud and it here and then we have the set of clouds there or we just can work directly with this with this output there's no problem so what we're going to do is if we want to extract these points and bring it into grasshopper so we will call this a low e57 point cloud so if we want to bring it into grasshopper um, right in, into Rhino, right now they're just points. Let's zoom, as you can see the number of points there were next to each other. So if you change the percentage, as you will see later, the percentage really 
affects the density, so it's loading different amount of densities. So you will see here, 0.1%, it will be very sparse. 100% will be very dense. So this is basically 100%, okay, of points. Now, we have here the, the, the cloud where we're got, we, we want to bring them into, into Rhino. What we need to do is uh, deconstruct it, the point cloud. So we go to Volvox and we go to cloud, deconstruct cloud. Okay. And we connect our cloud there. So it will take a couple of um, seconds. And then our cloud has been deconstructed. So as you can see, all the points there. And these points can go into point. Correct. You can also extract colors. Let's see if we can read that information. And you see the colors are represented as RGB and also the normals. In this case, they are normal, it's empty vector. So they are not normals, okay? So once you have this, you can bake those points. And I'm not gonna do it because there are too many, there are two million points. And so you bake the points and then you can easily, I will let me turn off this and let me turn off this. So then you will have all the points there. Let me turn on it. I'm just trying to. So you will see all the points there with a the color. Okay. I'm going to disable the preview of this and I'm going to disable this preview so it's not heavy. Um, so you see all the points. Then you can bake them, extract them in a particular layer, these are our layers, and then you have there all the points ready for you to be manipulated in. in um, in Grasshopper, there are millions of points, two millions. You can see them there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this. Otherwise, will be there will be too many. Okay, and again, I will turn on my point cloud. Let me see. So sorry, I'm disabling this and I'm enabling this. Okay, so it's pretty quick when you use this visualization. So once we have done this, um, what I want you is to the next step. Oh, let me group there, and then we're gonna use a name. Um, obtain, obtain points. Okay. Well, what's happening? Obtain. Okay, so once we have done this, the, ne the next tool that we can we can use in Volvox is how to create a section of this point. So we are going to create first a cloud plane. So to find a cloud plane, I think is in the analysis is here a cloud plane. So we put it here the plane, and for that we need the cloud. We're going to connect it at the very end. We need, for example, if we want to cut in the Y, Z, or Y, X direction, we, we need that information. So I'm going to get a Y, Z plane. Okay. I will connect the plane there. And then I can add an origin. To make it simple, I can use a point and connect the point. At the moment, nothing is working, just keep it simple. Then we can use a tolerance. The tolerance is an intersection events from a point cloud and plane. In this case, we can, we can. This is zero point zero one. I will put it in zero point in in, in one. It can be one point one. It can be any other number. I will show you later why. Then we need a, a boolean toggle. We can copy the one here. Let's put it in false. And then we can. Connect our cloud there. So nothing has happened because we don't have the point. So we go to the top view. Sorry. Zoom to that. It's not zooming. Yeah, it's there. And then let's imagine we want to cut here. So I would just put a point. The point is there. So we set this point and we choose it. And that will be the plane. So in that moment, in this moment, you you're not seeing anything. Let's go to perspective. But 
section has been created, so we need to disable this, and the section is there. Okay, so the tolerance will tell you how it's going to be the width of that section. So in this case, for example, I extracted a section of 4.3 meters or 0 0.3 meters or 0 or 0 0.5 meters. So you can see the section here. Okay, so this is very interesting. And then you have the point. So if you move the point, of course, the section will vary. And if you put multiple points, then you may have multiple sections. So let's go back again to the top. And let's imagine we copy, we create another point here. Let's grab another point and build one point in particular there. And then instead of setting one, we set multiple and grab these two and then click enter. And let's see if it works. It seems it didn't work. Let me, let me clear all values, set multiple points, set this to enter, and created the two sections. So then we have the two sections. And you can create not only YZ, you can change the plane and create in the other direction. Um, you can cross the, the point clouds as well. So very useful if you want to analyze different sections and profiles of your terrain, especially when the topography is very interesting and, and, and is steep like in this case. So you have this. Now, let's imagine I turn on this. They're overlapping. You cannot differentiate them. Okay. So what we're going to do is we can move this section. We disable this section here. and We create a command called move. And we use a unit set because I want to displace them in the set direction. Our geometries are these ones. And then we put a factor. In this case, for example, 100 meters. And so now the sections are displaced 500 meters. These are your sections. Uh, they were displaced. And you can create a parallel view of both. Very, very useful. Very, very interesting. Okay, so once we have done this, we can group this into a, a set of components called uh, create section. Okay, now I would like now to try other options available in Cloud in sorry in um, in Grasshopper Volvox. Okay. So we can keep the sections and the rest there. That's good. The next one, um, maybe we have too many points, as I say before. We can change the percentage here, but we can also subsample a, a, a particular amount of or portion of uh, or a set of, of, of points. So what we're going to do to do that, we can use something called engine. Engine is a, is a processor of different um, let's say, um, transformations of instructions. So we need to add the, so, something called cloud engine. And we have instructions here. And as we add more instructions, there will appear more options here. So the first one, the name is random sam subsampling. So it will come here. This is the random subsampling. So if we want to reduce the subsampling of these points. What we need to do is just connect the cloud directly to this engine and then a percentage. So our percentage can be 0.4%. And we can also have a seed from 0 to 1, in this case is 1 to 3, etc. We can leave it. And then add the instruction here. So what we're going to have here is another cloud. And I want to show you that this cloud is 0.4%. is showing 40% uh, of point clouds randomly selected. So how we can show this is simply, you can see here some um, the spaces in between the point clouds. And I want to disable this. You can disable, look, it's 40%. And all the points has been randomly distributed. We turn it on, and most of the Point clouds are not randomly distributed. 
are kind of aligned. Now, let's do an experiment. Let's do this 100%. And now, let's disable this to see if it changed also the distribution of the point clouds. And it's not changing the distribution of the point clouds. No, it didn't change. So that's interesting. But if we put 0 0.9%, so it's 90%, um, you should have the cloud. Yeah, it, it changed the, the distribution. It changed randomly. Okay. So that's something interesting to try. So I will leave it in, let's say, 0 0.70% or something like this. Okay, 70% of the points. So this could be useful if you want to process and rapidly visualize and then you can bring it back into 100% at the end of the of the process. As you can see, the instruction zero was there. The instruction one has been added automatically as you add more instructions. So the next one, the next one, it's cropping. For cropping, you have different options. You can use the link clip or a box or a sphere. I will use the box, simple, the most useful and, and common. So the box is a three-dimensional cropping. Okay. And you just basically for this need, need a box. So we are going to create a box. Connect it there. Connect the instruction. As you can see, nothing happened. Just another instruction was added. So I have a box already created here. As you can see, it's three dimensional. So if you crop the, the, the box and you want to select a particular height of, of, um, of point clouds, you can use it as well. So I will select set one box and then I will select. So how you select it, you select this point, select this point, you select the, sorry, I made a mistake. So set one point, send one box, sorry, it's there. I select the other, and then you select the depth. So I will select up there. So you can see that's the point. And you see it crop at that point. We can again set one box. We go from here up to here and we go to the bottom. And all the points appear. So it's very, very useful if you really want to select different heights and different widths and length of your point clouds. Now you can turn on still uh, i will show you that later but um so this is another very useful uh it's another very useful um method to crop your points so once we have this now um you can turn off our box i will turn off this box so you you keep it there selected what happens is if we turn on or enable again this this particular um, the original point cloud, and we want to displace this. So to displace, we can use move, right? We use move, we add this geometry, and then we put again a unit set, and then we put a number that we want to displace 500 meters. Okay. So now we move the box 500 meters okay, up, but we haven't moved the point clouds that are inside. So let me disable this. Just move the box. How we can move or transform that, translate as a point cloud. Very easy. Let me grab this. Let me grab this. So what we can do here is use something called transform. And applies any sort of transformation can be rotate, can be move in the in any direction, etc. So just let me organize these things. Oh, sorry. Okay. So we are we are gonna apply a transformation there, and then we are add the instruction into the cloud. So we look if we move it 500 meters. Now if we move this uh, a bit more. 125 meters, then the points have moved, the box have moved, everything has moved. Well, we can we can disconnect this as well, and there is not a problem. Let's see what happens when we disconnect it. 
because we just skip the point cloud. So this is very useful if you want to create a um, exploded axonometric, then export everything this back into um, um, the point clouds and then into, for example, SketchFab. So you can stack different layers one on top of each other. So it's very interesting and, and, and useful tool if you want to add or segment or cut part of the of your point clouds and create a much more complex three-dimensional model. Um, let me add it there just to keep reference of the box. Okay, so that is very cool. Remember, you can bake any of these steps. So no problem. Every time you have a cloud or you generate a new cloud by cropping or creating the sections, you can, the, uh, there are two sec for example, two segments here, you can just create a geometry tool, connect to the geometry and you can bake the geometry. Okay. Now, we are going to organize a bit this, it's a bit slow, sorry. Um, let's organize this. So what we can do here is basically, this is what we call subsampling. Subsampling. This one is cropping. And this one is, except this one, I don't want this one. Sorry. Uh, moving, moving, translating, etc. Okay. Then now we can add one more interesting um, uh, option or tool, which is the voxel subsampling. Okay. So what we're gonna do is once we have done this, we can go here and then go to the voxel subsampling. And it works different than the previous one that is 80%. Simply, it will tell you can tell how many points you will want for your whole for your whole point cloud um, file. So if you put the size, I will put I will put 500. Let's imagine. Connect there, and then connect the instruction. As you can see, it has reduced considerably. Okay, so you modify their the size. Now let's try with another number, which is, for example, five. And uh, you have here more. So it's I I assume is the distance between the points. Okay, this the the this method of some sampling is is applies a voxel, basically. So if it is you put one, it will be one meter. If you put three three meters, you put five hundred. That's happened before. It's not exactly, it's not what I, I, I was thinking, it's just the number of points for the total or for the entire um, cloud. It's just basically the distance or the voxel that you're using to subsample. So let's imagine I will keep it in two. Okay, so it's there are every two meters one point. Okay, good. So we will call this voxel. Soup sampling. Okay, now we go, we're moving into the next one, which is also very interesting. Um, let's say method of coloring the point clouds. So you have some options here in the utilities called voxel color. So this works on the other side of the, it's not an instruction. So you just add the cloud and then you want to add the voxel size. So let's imagine we add five meters. It will be very interesting the result, I promise. So when we come here, let me, let me do something. We don't need this here anymore. Okay. So as you can see here, there are voxels created. So you have voxels. The later, so some way your um, your point clouds. So your point clouds become in 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 cubic 
forms or voxels with a particular dimension. These are five by five. So if you reduce these voxels, the resolution increases and you can see it's one by one, two by two, three by three. And if you, as you increase the voxels and the array becomes more square or rough and irregular and coarse. So these can be all connected depending on the number of, of, of voxels you have, you the number of points you have. So if you increase here, for example, the size to three meters, they, these voxels will have more distance between them and you have to increase also the size of the voxel. As you decrease this number of voxels of sampling to one, for example, you will need to change also the size of the voxel. Um, let's do something is 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 thinking. So you can also bake this mesh. It will be baked as a mesh, not as an individual entities. Okay. So if you increase this to two or three or five or six, let's increase let's increase it to three. So if you come here and you click bake, as you as you can see, it has baked um, a set of voxels. Okay, so it has voxelated your space. This is very useful. Many will say, how is this useful? Um, I have another, I have other tutorial uh, on MVMet. Oh, I haven't released it yet, but in future, um, you can export or you can run um, analysis in MVMet, which is for a thermal comfort, is a computer fluid dynamic software. Um, and you can use for that, you can use, is I think Honeybee, no, a Dragonfly. So you have here MVMet. So you can, MVMet usually, this computer fluid dynamics use um, voxels. Um, so you voxelate the, the ground. You can voxelate trees. For example, if the point clouds that I'm using here are trees, you can create voxels of the trees or so are meshes. And you can represent the, ground, the, the tree canopy as trees. It can be the building. It can, you can voxelate a whole building. Let's imagine here in Cloud Compare, um, I use the segmentation tool to extract only buildings or part of facades, and you can do it in the same way. But this voxel doesn't have any color, so when you represent it as render, oh, they have the color. Oh, because it's color, sorry. So you have the color there, and it's a mesh. Okay. This is wireframe you don't notice. We can put shade. And you can see here in shaded the voxel. So this is a very interesting tool as well. Now what we have, um, uh, we have covered this voxel size, etc. Now let me group this and put a name. And the name is generate voxel. Okay. Now what we can do is also another process of voxelation, just a simple one. This is a Delano de, de, um, de de color, okay? And again, we use a cloud, depending on which cloud you use. If you use the other cloud at the very beginning, it will take longer. Um, I'm using a cloud and you can use a plane. I will leave it as an X, Y, and let's see what's happened. Let me turn off, um, disable this. So what we have done basically, Is it created? We created a mesh that you cannot see it at the very beginning here. But this mesh is a very simple Delano mesh. How it works? As it looks in this in this image, what you are doing is you just join the you triangulate between points. So you create a small triangle. If you bake this, you will understand. Once you bake it, it's, it's like this. As you can see, that's the distance between the points, and you your mesh resolution. It depends on the number of points. I think it's, it's very annoying, this thing. I don't know why it's not showing. It's... Sorry. So you see here. Oh, gosh. So you see there the mesh. OK, this you can see there the resolution of the mesh. OK, this mesh is really important because the second video, we're going to work with meshes. 
And we are going to do the opposite. We're going to export the mesh, a surface of a building or a combination of all of them. And we're going to export them as a um, E57 file. So we put here the mesh, OK, for later. So as you can see here, you're creating a mesh. In the other was a box, though. And this is a mesh. Uh, let's check if it is also a render. And I have the feeling it is. It's just the mesh render. Then you can transform this mesh into surface, into b rev etc. Back to wireframe, OK? So this is another very super useful um, tool. Um, finally, um, we have the exporting option, OK? So we want to save a um, particular uh, E57 um, set of uh, points. So it's not very difficult how to do that. It's another instruction. Okay. So we go here to the engine and we put save E57. We're going to do export. Let's imagine this is the cloud we want to export. It's very important the cloud you're connecting. Okay. You have several instructions. It will will understand that is all these instructions are going to be exported. So let's grab the file again. File path. No difficult. We add it there. We put this instruction here. We're gonna save this. Um, the instruction is not run because oh, I made a mistake. I should have defined the path first. So we are going to disconnect. Just wait a minute. OK, now what we're going to do is going to set one existing file. So you don't need to choose one, one file. What you can do is the grid, export it, and define the E57 as format and say OK. Now it's correct. Now the path is, is correct, it's working. And then you connect to the instruction for and will be automatically generated. And as you can see here, we'll go back to cloud compare. Look, this is the original grid. We put open. And we choose the export, which is here. Open. When we export it, the coordinates because they are different. If we don't put, if we put suggested, it will send it somewhere else. We need to put the last input because the last input corresponds to this point cloud. Just to all, and the mesh, the point clouds will be added there. And as you can see, these point clouds preserve the characteristics and the settings you define in Rhino and Grasshopper. Subsampling the distances the colors, the normals, and height. So as you can see, now you have here two point clouds. This one, the, scan, the new one, and the other one. The other one has, of course, a lot of scalar fields. Look, the original one. If you go to the scalar fields, you get intensity, number of returns, etc. Now the scan one, if you, you it has an RGB, that's all. It doesn't have any scalar field. This does the difference. OK, so you lose some information in this process. It's only RGB, and these are the RGBs, the intensity, the, the color that it used in, in Grasshopper. Now, you want to create a, um, a scalar, for example, representing height. It's not very difficult. You go here to edit, scalar fields, at point, um, export coordinate to a scalar field, Z1, OK. And then so you create a scalar field correspond to the coordinate set, which means absolute height, and you can use any sort of representation can be gray, can be this one. And you can export this as a color, as an RGB as well. Edit colors, convert to, um, sorry, convert. The, you can convert the color to scalar field or also convert the scalar field to color. So go to scalar field, convert to RGB. You want to mix it or not, we'll say yes. And you can see now the intensity has been mixed or the original, the color has been mixed with the scalar field representation. Now you have this. Now, um, if you want, you can merge both. I, I always, before merging, I clone. I turn off these two, and I select them and merge them. And I say, yeah, generate scalar field with the original 
our index. Let's say just to see what happens. So it changed this thing. Okay, that's a problem. RGB. So um that's how it looks now our model. Our whole model has it's is now combined into one single one cloud. Now you can export this and save it for Sketchfab. For that you need to save it as Sketchfab has problems with LAS. It doesn't work with E57. You have to save it as an ASCII grid uh, dot and put the ASC ASC. And once you save it, it's ready for to just keep it as it is. Okay, and it will be safe as uh, ready for a Sketchfab. So these are examples on how you manipulate different um, clouds in in Rhino and Grasshopper. You can segment. You can generate pieces. The same can be done with Cloud Compare. The difference is like in Grasshopper and Rhino, you needed sometimes to do to do this to generate meshes, modify terrain. Let's imagine you want to uh, work with Bison, other tools. Um, you want to use the voxels for multiple more applications. The cloud compares only for manipulation of the pure point cloud. Um, I wanted to do a final test before finishing this video, which is modifying or manipulating the color. So what happened if you color before your point cloud? So let's imagine this was where our original point cloud, correct? It used the intensities automatically was decided by the software. I want to color it. I have other tutorials on how to color this. You can color using a mesh. You can color using class tools. You can color using a unique value. Let's do it the fast way here, just by color to find a unique value. Like is this green, okay? We just color it. Now we save it as um, E57 ground, and I will add the name color, okay? So it's saving right now. It's taking a bit because the E57 using, is using two processes. Okay, good. Now we come here and I want to is, instead of using this file, what I'm gonna do is I want to disable this. I want to copy the whole set on here because I don't want the whole process to happen again. Otherwise, it will take quite a while because all the algorithm, all the definition will be wrong. So instead of doing this, I will put false and I will come here and set a new E57, which is the color and put OK. So you can check it always connecting a panel to see if you're 100% sure that what you're done is correct. Okay, is the color. And now what we're gonna do is turn through and it's loading. And then we turn on this and yes, it's true. The color was added there. So you can define the color before Cloud Compare. You can watch the two videos I created already on that, how to color cloud uh, clouds. Then bring it into Rhino and Grasshopper because then it will be easier for you to manipulate them. So check those videos are in YouTube, how you can color using an aerial image, how you can color using also a particular scalar field. Let's make it uh, another experiment quickly. We just calculate again the scalar field based on height. So it's export, okay. And we are gonna use this, this color is fine, okay. Now what we're gonna do is edit scalar fields. Um, convert to RGB and this time we don't mix it. We just leave it as it is. And now you can see this is the RGB. And we save it again. We save it as color two. Let's avoid over overwriting to avoid problems with grasshopper. Okay, save. Again, it will take a bit. Now we go back to grasshopper, and again we set this to false. We change the file and we add the color two. And what has been done? False. 
and disable or enable and then there and color has been transferred so with this we prove two things the first thing is when they we don't define any color in cloud confer it will use a random value in this case was a random information from the scalar field in this case was the intensity but you can color your point clouds and then bring in and, and they're imported into rhino and grasshopper and then you will have this sort of representation as you see the render looks looks where here oh because of the layers i don't know render looks good because assumes there is a plane here what we can do is use the shaded one. Um, oops, right? Lost it. No, um, shaded works better. Okay, so that is another possibility. And in this way, we prove it works pretty well um, um, if we color before. So this is all for today. I will have another video tutorial teaching how we can now do the opposite at volumes, for example, buildings, trees, modify the surfaces. We already have plenty of information on that modifying meshes. So it's how you can export elements, model it in Grasshopper in, uh, um, into um, a point cloud, or basically how to export a model of um, Grasshopper as a point cloud. And that it is also quite interesting. I really hope you enjoy today and I hope you enjoy the next tutorial on Volvox. Thank you very much. See you next time.